Does that mean that one should not strive for? This is a very difficult question. Should, should one strive for success in the ephemeral world? Of course. Because you because you have hundred percent, you either go sixty percent into you have only hundred percent of the time, twenty four hours in a day. If you devote yourself to your profession and business or whatever, right? You are devoting a certain time to that, yes. and in in this in this process, you are bound to hurt other people because it's a competitive world. If you want to be ahead of the others, you are going to hurt others in some way, right? You may not beat them, but then they are going to be affected, right? So there is that contradiction one faces. I, for instance, I'm a young person. I'm a professional. I want to get on in life. At the same time, because of my sanskar, which I have seen in my house, I cannot try and get a sense of balance. Where does religion begin, and where does the worldly thing end? I mean, where should one put a stop to it? How can I answer that? And if a man takes a knife and stabs someone, <coughs> immediately police uh, arrest him and takes him away. And uh, another man puts a man forcibly on a table and he takes a knife and stabs him. Uh, he is given uh, uh, two thousand uh, pounds for it because he performs a surgical operation. <laughs> But he does the same thing. Uh, he also takes a sharp knife and uh, cuts open a man. That man is immediately arrested. This man is not paid for it. Sir. So action is identical, but the interpretation and the value of it is according to the motive. Now in this competitive world, if you are trying to progress and you are hurting others, are you engaged in trying to progress in your profession or are you doing it in order to hurt others? What is your motivation? No, motivation is is implicit because you are not doing it explicitly. I don't want yeah. to progress. If yeah. others are hurt, so you try. You try the the you hurting process is also relative hurting process. And uh, if you are a person of scruples, you will try to work for your progression by keeping the un- inevitable effect of hurting others minimal. <coughs> you will try to do it in such a way that it is kept as minimal to the best of your ability. You will try to attain your own progress yeah. by hurting minimal. And whereas that also is only no intention is there, no motive is there. You cannot help it; it's just an offshoot. Therefore, you will try to see, and let me succeed, but without hurting others. And if it cannot be avoided, mean. That is what God wants. God sees your heart, your motivation. He does not uh, see, misunderstand uh, a human being. 
and regarding the time devoted to secular activity, I cannot 100% do my sadhana even though I want to get realization. There is a slight misconception. Nine hours, if you work in a secular field, don't think those nine hours are a loss from the spiritual point of view. Those nine hours, you have not done sadhana, you have not done bhajan. Bhajan se vanchit ho gaya. You don't have to think like that. Because if we approach those nine hours also in the right vision and right understanding, you will gradually, it will dawn upon you, wherever I am flying a profession, I am doing it in the divine presence of God. There is not a speck of space, not an atom of matter, where God is not fully present in all His fullness. Therefore, wherever I am, I am on sacred ground. I am in the presence of God. And in the presence of God, man can only adore and worship. He cannot engage in any other activity. Therefore, whatever, whatever I am engaged in doing or acting, this is all done in the divine presence. Therefore, it is all his. Aradhana in a different way. You see, therefore, I do my profession, but to me it is not a secular process. It is an act of adoration. And therefore, I do it with the awareness of God's presence. I do it with, therefore, the spirit of adoration, feeling attitude of adoration, and I offer up my act also to God. Then the distinction between the outer secular and the inner spiritual gradually becomes erased, and your entire life of 24 hours activity becomes uh, directed in one unified way. So, inner and outer become mutually support the officer. That is the teaching of the Gita. Mahamanusmara Yudhacha. Keep me in my in your heart, remember me and engage in your duty. In Arjuna's case it was back let's say Mahamanusmara Yudhacha. In another context he said to engage in action is the need of this, where you cannot avoid action. But while you are engaged in fulfilling your Kartava Dharma do not lose contact with me. Inwardly be in close relationship with me. Yoga stak kuru karmani sangham tektva dhananya. Yoga stak kuru karmani. Kuru karmani engage in action. Yoga stak. Let there be a state of yoga. Inwardly be in a state of constant close relationship with me and engage in action. Then your karma will not bind you. It will no longer be several. It is spiritual. Your actions will be yogic actions. And acting thus, offer up all your actions to me. I will receive it as adoration and I will bless you. Yat karoshi atas nasi at dihoshi dharasi at yat tapasya sikaunte tad kurushva madarpana. So when he spoke to Arjuna, he was speaking to you, he was speaking to me. He was not speaking uh, for Mahabharata time only. He was speaking for all times to man on earth engaged in unavoidable earthly activity. So this is uh, the transforming touch by this Divya Bhav. Activity becomes yogic activity. All life becomes spiritual life. If you do it in the awareness of God's presence everywhere, at every moment, and then engage in all activity in the spirit of worship. See, the greatest Advaitic philosopher, Adi Guru Shankaracharya said, he said that all life is worship. All your activities are divine. Even eating, drinking, sleeping, talking, everything is divine. And so he says, how the whole of man's activity is a divine process of worshipping and adoring God. He has made a beautiful stotra. And in the concluding verse he says, My inner self you are. My mind is your Shakti, partner. This body is your temple. And whatever I utter is your praise. Tuti Stotra. And wherever I go, I am doing parikrama around your sacred shrine, your presence. And when I see and enjoy, hear and enjoy, taste and enjoy, I am offering bhog to you. 
all these enjoyments I am not enjoying. I am offering bhog to you. And when I go to sleep, I go into samadhi. Atma tum girijamati sahatara prana shariram griham puja aste vishyo pabhoga ratana nidra samadhi stiti sanchara padeho pradishna vidhi stutra sutrani sarvagiro yadya karma karo me tatta rakhiram shambho tavara adhana. In the concluding verse of what is known as Shiva Manasa Puja Stotra, composed by the great Devadur Adi Shankaratari. This is the way, if you live like that, your entire life becomes divine. The, the, the demarcation between secular and the sacred becomes completely erased. And so activity also becomes yogic life, becomes spiritualized. And your actual sadhana in the form of actual processes of bhakti, bhajan, jab, that also, because hundred percent they are uh, made to move in the right direction because this becomes a complement, supporting process. That is how we have to divinize our entire work, feeling the presence of God at all times, everywhere, and feeling that we are living and moving in His presence. Therefore, all of our life is nothing but a continuous process of, see, worship. And you lend Him, I saw in your upstairs, two copies of Guru's Japa Yoga. Yes. yes. So one book you give to him, yes. all his questions regarding the Japa Sadhana yes. will become answered. Then no more any doubt will be there. May I ask a question, Samji? Yes. Uh, Samji, the last, the progress which the science has made in the last 150 years is unprecedented. Yes, admirable. Is there a God's purpose in life? And if so, is it the oneness of mankind? <coughs> and you were about to ask this question and answer it. Do we have a task, some of, some of us have a task to go about changing the world in our own humble way? You see, the best way to change the world is to make yourself a center of light. And then uh, wherever you go, darkness will go away. They say, uh, so if you reform yourself, if you change yourself, there is no greater and more effective way of changing the world. Teach by being. The example. And if God puts into your way opportunity, then also share whatever has been given to you, share it with others. But don't think, I have got a mission or a task, but spontaneously do it. Let me make, for example, when that wonderful prayer was uttered by uh, St. Francis, he did not say, I am going to do all these things. He said, Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is anger, let me so pardon. Where there is doubt, let me so faith. Where there is despair, let me so hope. Where there is darkness, let me so light. Where there is sadness, let me so joy. So he said, make me an instrument to go on doing this. So, from one point of view, each and every individual has a mission in life. And that mission is to reflect in you glory of God. Glory of God. Stand witness to the perfection, the divinity and the goodness and the glory of God. And then to, because you are his uh, ambassador here. He has made you in his image. And uh, uh, it is the task of every true son of a family to uphold the prestige and uh, the good name of the family. And so you are his child. They uh, say, Mata Pita to Mary. Sarana go home. So he is Mata Pita. You are his putra. And therefore you uh, go about trying to be a true son of God, true child of God. And by your life, uh, let the world know. Okay. You should not have wine. Now, I don't personally have wine, but in an environment that you live, should you have wine in your house or not for others to drink? You should not have. You must have backbone. You should not be a jellyfish. I mean, in India, I have been here, but here it's been, you know, because... You see, you should not compromise on this. And if you stand for... After a time, they will understand. After a time, they will understand. 
پھر میرے فادر کہتے تھے تو مجھے بڑا عجیب لگتا تھا لیکن آئی کین انڈرسٹینڈ ہم نہ جو پوجا ہمارے گھر میں ہوتی ہے جب جہاں پر میں گرو اپ کرا ہوں وہاں تو سب بھگوان ستھاپت ہیں تو ہر روز نیم سے پوجا ہوتی ہے اب میں یہاں پر رہ رہا ہوں تو مجھے ڈر لگتا ہے کہ میں بھگوان کو ستھاپت کر کے میں ان کی سیوا نہیں کر پاؤں گا سو آئی لمٹ مائی سیلف ٹو مائی ٹین منٹس کی پوجا من میرا بہت چاہتا ہے کہ میری اچھی پوجا ہو میں ویسے کروں لیکن آئی ایم ناٹ شیور نہیں ایسے ستھاپت کرنے کی ضرورت نہیں You can only keep a picture or something. What is that? So you make your entire worship uh, not a karam kand, but a spiritual process. What is the difference between the two? Because my father does five hours of puja every day. My daddy does six hours. In karam kand, there is a lot of niyam-nishta. You can't leave niyam-nishta in the correct form. But in the spiritual process, there is a lot of niyam-nishta.